Alright, so in this tutorial I want to cover the dot is a method. And this me this is a method that's very helpful for when you give people the option of using Edward regions to enter their own stuff. So that way you can check to make sure they've entered the right information and it doesn't crash your script. Alright, but before I jump into that, I want to hop into some things that I do when I write if statements and stuff like that. So that way if I ever do it by habit, I don't confuse you. Alright, so you have if statements here, and I know I did this during my third tutorial, but I didn't notice it. If I was to go if cool boolean, and then go down, and then go message box underscore p hooray, this still works. As intended. Because what happens is, when you play, hooray! What happens is, if statements, um, you don't need to have the equals equals all the time next to it and go true. By default, if you don't have an, any equals equals signs next to it, it checks for it to be true. So in this case, if cool, colon colon boolean. So if this here is true, then print out hooray. Otherwise, if I also set this to false, then the boolean itself is going to be false and it's not going to be true and I won't say hooray. See? Now I can use that as many times as I want. So if I set this to true and then um go boolean two down here two equal to true right and I if I was to go down here and go if cool boolean and cool uh boolean two as you can see I still don't need any equals equal sign next to it, it still works just fine. See? Okay, and I'll set that false now so we can see. Make sure it still works. False. There we go. So that's how that works. I can even set this to nil. And what's going to happen? I'm going to get nothing. Now let's put a number into it. Number? What happens? Hooray! Now that one probably confused the crap out of you. Actually, it's really straightforward. What happens is, when something is nil, alright, when you check for this stuff, if something is either false or nil, then this is not true at all. If this has either true or a number or a string, if it has anything in it besides nil or false, then this on its own is true. Okay? So this is true here, and that's nil, so that means this is going to be false. And if I set that to false, actually false, then that's going to be false as well. Alright, and this is something I use all the time, so I want to go down to the collision script and get rid of that because I don't need that. I just need unless at collision sound timer, which means it's not nil. Okay, safe or possible. Just need to have unless possible. I don't need to have equals equals true. If I also run it and play it. It still works, right? Okay. Now there are some more, and uh, that would be the exclamation mark. Now all the exclamation mark, do, all the uh, exclamation mark does is it checks if this is false. So at this point, we've just been going this equal, equal to false, right? So if this is true and this is equal to false, it's going to print out hooray. Yay! Now, um, if I change that to true, it's going to be uh, not showing. Alright. So now, get rid of it. Bring it up. Put an exclamation mark in front of it. Play it. Now, here's what, here's what the exclamation, do exclamation mark does when you put it in front of uh, variables. It actually checks for it to be false. So in this case, I go cool boolean, this has to be true for um, this section of the uh, if statement to be true. And this has to be false for this to be uh, true. So in this case, this is true, as it says here, and this one's false here. And that's what we're checking for. We're checking for this one to be true and this one to be false. And that's exactly what the exclamation mark does. It says, if not true. 
And um, it's helpful, helpful to remember because it's just like the not equal sign. So if it's not true, then you're false. Alright, so if true and if false, run this. Alright, and that's um, sort of my habits to writing um, alternative if statements and uh, stuff like that. And these are used more by your um, regular scripters, so if you were to read their code, you would probably see these a lot, and it's helpful to know it now while you are new, because if you're anything like me, you will study other people's code to try and learn things yourself, and you'll see this stuff, and you'll be like, well, what the hell is that? So it's good to know now. Anyway, now we can get rid of all this. We can go to Boolean, and we can go... Uh, message box underscore p um, integer if uh, we're making out a variable up here we'll call it variable equals one if cool variable uh, dot is a integer okay so message box underscore p integer if cool variable is an integer and as we know an integer is a whole number so I'll put dot fl uh, dot zero there that would not be an integer okay and we can repeat this a couple of more times okay and we have float float uh, string All right so go here type in uh, string and float. Okay, so if cool dot variable is dot is an integer, so it's going to print out integer. Integer. All right. Now we'll change this to uh, we'll change it to a boolean for now, so that way none of these pop up. There we go. Now we'll change it to float. Two point oh. Float. And now a string. String space. Okay. Play and string. And that really is all what dot is a does. And now for some reason when they decided to make Ruby as a as a language, they did not use booleans in dot is a because so in this case I cannot go message box underscore p boolean if variables dot is a boolean okay what's gonna happen is I'm going to get an error for undefined uh, constant undefined constant boolean alright so Ruby on its own doesn't know what a boolean is well it does but it doesn't at the same time the reason why is they actually made um, they didn't make it with a boolean as a background. Instead, they made a true class and a false class. All right? But I'm not going to use them because, quite frankly, I think that's really annoying to type in. So I found an alternative way to doing this kind of stuff, and that is to go uh, variable. Okay. Now, run it. Boolean. Alright, and you probably have no clue what's going on there. Alright, so basically what it's doing is it's disabling and then re enabling the Boolean. Alright, so we are turning it off with the exclamation mark, as I just showed you before. It checks the opposite. And then we're re enabling it. And since it's a variable, that means it's going to be like false, then true. And then it's going to go use the equal equals the variable. Since it's false here, it's going to disable that back to true and then disable it back to false. And then if it's equal equals to cool variable, which it is, then it's a boolean. Because if I was to try this with a number, it's going to um, try disabling that and it's going to disable that back to zero. Because that's kind of the way code works with this kind of case. So it's going to disable that back to zero and then it's going to try and. Um, Put it, try to put stuff back onto it, and then it's going to equal to nil, sort of. Alright, so this this here can only work with booleans, and that's how you can test to make sure booleans work. Alright, so if I was to uh, change this to something else like 10, this was still going to print out an intro, not boolean. 
integer not a boolean all right and that's some pretty straightforward stuff on what dot is it is and some of the alternative ways to use if statements which I think are pretty handy to know right about now because um, I use them a lot and I suspect I'd probably be using them due to habit really soon since I've been scripting a bit lately but anyway um, that's all you really need to know really it's just dot is a integer dot is a flow dot is a string and that's how you get booleans now dot is a on its own is not to check if something's an integer float or a string or a boolean it's actually a check if something is an instance of a class so in this case here uh, we have we are using an instance of game player here okay now what we can do is we can go uh, we can make a class we'll, let's make a class make a class um me I don't know why just me and then uh definitionalize and I'm not gonna have anything in it um then I'm gonna make a, a local variable here just me is equal to me dot new all right now in uh actually we'll put it here put it here Right and um, play. Just I want to make sure that actually works. Okay, still works fine. Good, beautiful. Now we can go down here and we can go um, Mrs. Box underscore p me class used if m a dot is a m e. Now that looks a little bit strange, sort of. So yeah, maybe I can change that. Let's change this to you. Equals you dot new. Nope. All right. Now this is obviously complete bollocks, but yes, class you definition lies, and then we're making a new class of me is equal to you, and then me class used if me dot is a you alright that's a bit of a mouthful but to put it simply if this here this thing is an is a m instance of you like class you then this is true okay integer me class used otherwise I've also changed this to game player game underscore player nothing popped at that time so clearly this is only used to call in uh, instance of classes so in this case since we are in fact making the instance of you then this is true but aside from that I only really use these for integer fluid strings and booleans because I make editable regions and I want to make sure the user actually put in the right stuff into the editable regions and I don't want them to screw up the code that way. So that's how I use them and you can also use them for uh, checking class instances which I do sometimes as well but not that often since I already know what I'm making. Alright so that's all there is to it and until next time guys.